This video will demonstrate how to solve a basic projectile motion problem. As a reminder, projectile motion is a special case of a problem with constant acceleration. Such problems involve many variables to keep track of, such as time, position, velocity, and acceleration. In projectile motion, the object is in free fall. This means that its vertical acceleration is downward and has a constant value of 9.8 meters per second squared. There is no acceleration in the horizontal direction. To recognize projectile motion problems, look for key words such as thrown, shot, or dropped. Apply these equations in the horizontal and vertical directions and set up a standard coordinate system. You should use the following steps when solving projectile motion problems. Read the problem for the variables of time, position in two dimensions, and velocity in two dimensions. The acceleration is already assumed. Draw the picture to keep track of all the variables. Set up the standard coordinate system. Velocity vectors are usually given in polar coordinates, so calculate their components. To solve for each question, refer back to your list of kinematic equations and select based on what is being asked for and what is given. Solve algebraically for the unknown and then plug in with units. For velocities especially, you may be asked to convert back to polar coordinates. At the end, reread the problem and make sure you have answered all questions sensibly. Here is a demonstration of these steps using a basic example. A ball is thrown at an angle onto a rooftop and you are asked to calculate positions, times, and velocities throughout. Read the problem for all kinematic variables. Highlight what is being asked for. Keep in mind some clues are given verbally rather than numerically. Draw the picture 
to keep track of time, position, and velocity at the beginning, maximum height, and end of the flight. Set up your coordinate system. For velocities given in polar coordinates, calculate their components. The first question asks for maximum height. This is code for the vertical velocity being zero there. We select the equation based on what is being asked for. and what is already known. We solve for the unknown and plug in with units. Now that we know all the vertical positions, we can calculate the total time in the air. We can solve this in a single step using a quadratic equation, although it is safer to use the first equation to solve this piecemeal. We first solve for the flight time on the way up, then for the time on the way down, with the simplification that the vertical velocity at maximum height was zero. We add these up to get the total time in the air. To get horizontal displacement, keep in mind that the horizontal velocity is constant throughout. We only need to insert the total time in the air. To solve for final velocity, we first need to calculate the final vertical velocity. Again, use the simplest equation for this. Plug in your previous answers and check that your answer is realistic. In this example, we expect the final vertical velocity to be negative but smaller in magnitude than the initial vertical velocity.
now that you have the components, convert the final velocity back to polar coordinates. Go back and reread the problem and check that every one of your answers matches the picture.